Hey guys, Pedro here to tell you about the latest from Necrophobic in the Twilight Grey, out March 15th on Century Media Records. The album has 10 tracks, 53 minutes in length, and this is the band's 10 full length studio album. They are a Swedish death black metal band. As far as the design goes, I think this album is going to offer the listener two different perspectives. At first glance, the album feels very compact, uh, it feels very balanced, very cohesive, almost linear at times. Almost like the experience that you get in the first song is going to be the experience that's going to stay all the way through. It's not the case. The deeper you dive, the more you understand this record, the more you see that there's a lot of different uh, influences on a song by song basis. And those influences change the sonic perspective of the record, making this album actually very dynamic and very fluid. It's a very engaging album from that standpoint because it's engaging in a subtle way. It doesn't force changes to the listener, it rather allows you to discover them as you're discovering the record. This design is a pure representation of the sound of the songs that the album offers. And the sound that this album offers has an interesting approach to it. I talked about the influences and the influences obviously drive the sound and allows this record to have a different perspective. When you look at how these songs are placed and when you look at the quality of the songs and, and how the songs come about, you can see different sides of Necrophobic on this record, almost like a representation of the band's discography of what they've done in the past and what they're doing in the present. And I think this is a nice way to encapsulate everything under one single umbrella. But the most noticeable element of the sound of this album is not how the guitars are in the forefront and how they're driving the experience because that's been something that's consistently uh, been put forward by this band but rather the gap that exists between the drum sound and the guitars. The drums on this album sometimes are super close to the guitars. There's almost no gap in between them and that makes the songs heavier, thicker, uh, with more substance, with more power. In some songs, the distance between them is massive. It's almost like the guitars are on the driver's seat while the drums and bass are in the trunk. That makes the songs feel darker, more driven, um, more haunting. So depending on the influence behind each and every single song, the distance between those two elements changes almost on a track by track basis. There, there, there's no two tracks that where that distance is exactly the same. It really varies depending on what they wanted out of the song and what influenced them to write that song. So if they were going with a more traditional black metal track, the distance between the two was a lot more noticeable. That allows the track to be more penetrating, more driven, darker, somber, sinister. In songs where you have more of a melodic black metal sound or even a death metal sound, the distance becomes slightly shorter. That makes the song feel more robust. It adds heaviness where the song needs that heaviness and it also allows the melody to still have an impact in the overall atmosphere but not to be as driven as it is when the drums are so far behind. This was something that was hard for me to adjust to. As a listener, it's easier when you get a record where the elements are always in the same place, they just change the impact or they just change their shapes and textures as you're moving from track to track. But the guitars are always in one spot, the drums are always in another. This record almost forces you to reset with each and every single song. You cannot take expectations from one track into the next because they're not going to be there. The second track that you're listening to on this album is going to have a different influence, it's going to have a different perspective, it's going to have a different outcome than the track that came before. All the elements are the same, they're just in a different place with different distances in between them. That allows the songs to be unique, to be diverse from one another, but still really well connected, which gives you that fluidity that the overall album has. And that just showcases perhaps the guitar sound the most. This is a guitar heavy, a guitar driven album and creating that space in between them and allowing that space to change really showcases and it really pushes those guitars into the forefront, which is one of the greatest elements of the band and of this record. The guitar sound on the album is phenomenal. It doesn't matter where you're looking at it, it just always delivers what it needs to deliver. The guitar solos, for example, uh, give so much energy, so much life, uh, allow you to better understand the influences of the track and allow you to better digest the track because they always feel like they are a little bit of the explanation of what the song was all about. If you look at the songs where the guitars are a little bit more heavy, you can see that power coming into the songs, infusing the songs. 
the melodies and, and, and the drivenness that the guitar sound has in some of the songs on this record allow the atmosphere of the album to be palpable. It allows that sense of darkness, that sense of, of being uh, uh, haunting, of the song becoming haunting, being sinister, really comes to life through the guitar sound first and foremost. So it's, it's a guitar-centric record that allows all the elements to really push them into that pedestal and keeps it there consistently. It's one of the most consistent elements of the record where the guitars are going to be from start to finish. Just because the drums have that distance and it took me a long time to adjust to it, it doesn't mean that the, the drums don't sound good or don't have a, a main purpose. You cannot push the guitars to where they are without the drums creating that movement. The movement that the drums are creating is important. The substance of the drum sound is very consistent as well. I really like the drum sound. It's just that sometimes feels a little bit closer to you, sometimes feels a little bit further from you. But that doesn't mean that the drum sound itself doesn't have consistency, it doesn't have power, it doesn't have heaviness. So I really enjoyed how the drums stayed consistent like that. They were just moved up and down the line. Now, when it comes to the vocal performance, this is definitely a, a steady record. Uh, a record that allows you to see the consistent that uh, the consistency that this band has vocally it doesn't really change regardless of the influence regardless of the track the vocals stay very balanced all the way through and that's one of the other elements with the guitars that are really in the forefront they're both in the in that pedestal that leads the charges song in and song out all around when i look at this record th this is a really strong necrophobic album but the movement in the sound the production in the sound for someone like me who's looking for a little bit more consistency almost forces me to pick sides and I felt like the songs that I gravitated towards the most are the ones that had a, a smaller gap between drums and guitars. This makes me pick songs and it doesn't allow me to feel completely balanced out as far as the experience of the record is. Uh, it makes me uh, divide the album into two camps and anytime you, you, you force a listener to do that, you're taking away from the overall experience of the record. And, and that is something that this album left me feeling. It left me feeling that I had to choose sides and I wasn't really able to always reset 100% in order to get into the next song and get the most out of it. As far as favorite tracks are concerned, I want to start off with uh, Clavis and Fernie, a super driven track. From the start, the guitars really take this song through and the drums help fill in the back end. Now, on this song, the two are quite a bit apart, but the essence of the track, it's so good. The haunting melodic guitar sound is so good that it almost feels like it shortens that distance as the song progresses. It feels like it becomes a little bit more cohesive. The atmosphere is top notch super vocal consistent infusing also a lot of darkness and a lot of haunting elements through the vocals which enhances what the guitars are doing with their more melodic side but this is definitely a track that showcases that the guitars are the main course on this album and obviously on this song next we have mirrors of a thousand lakes this is my favorite track on the entire album i don't think you're going to get a song as haunting as menacing as this song is, with a chorus as hooky, as catchy as this one is. This song has all the right elements in it, from design, to chorus, to guitar solo, to melodies. Uh, everything on this track is absolutely perfect. I love the drums, I love the impact that they offer. They definitely have a defining, um, a defining role in the essence of the sound itself. It still allows the song to be super dark, super melodic, with the guitars coming over the top and being that consistent driving force of the track itself. But the drums help complete this song a lot more. They gave the this, this song a little bit of a stronger foundation, if you will. There's less of a gap between the two. The vocals connect the dots perfectly. They're a little bit of the glue that holds the space that exists between those guitars and those drums. And then, like I said, great chorus, super catchy, ho super hooky, an outstanding, outstanding solo section that completes the song, that makes this one of the most, if not the most haunting, melodic, dark song on this record. Last but not least, Cast in Stone. Uh, it starts off very methodic, and the vocals jump out 
into the forefront, I would say even ahead of the guitars, because the guitars are a little bit more subdued, uh, they're a little bit more uh, laboring themselves through, and you can see a lot of uh, a lot of layers, and you can see the melodic side of this track kind of cutting through a little bit, becoming slightly more driven as the song progresses. Uh, the drums are a little bit further apart, that allows the guitars to cut better, to be more driven, uh, to be more menacing from that perspective, because they almost uh, they almost feel like they're slashing through, almost like a knife. And that really brings some of the melodic side into the forefront. It's a track that starts to feel a little bit bigger and it's, it starts to move more as it progresses. It doesn't stay as methodic as it was in the beginning. It gains momentum uh, and that also allows the track to morph and change. The perception that you had at the beginning is not going to be the perception that you had at the end. It's a track that uh, allows you to feel like like it's growing, it's morphing, it's adding more volume, it's adding more texture, it's becoming bigger as it moves along. So it, there are there is not ebbs and flows with this track, but rather gradual movement as it goes upwards and as it moves forwards. Great song from that perspective, very dynamic, very engaging. This is it, Necrophobic in the Twilight Grey, out March 15th on Century Media Records. Let me know your thoughts on the band, on the singles, hit me up in the comment section. I'll see you all at the next video. Take care, guys.